Welcome to lesson two, stock splits and fractions. This is a continuation of the previous lesson, stock splits. In this lesson, our objectives will be to calculate the fractional value a shareholder will receive for a split. So sometimes when stocks are split, things don't come out evenly, and that's what we're going to explore today. As I said, the previous lesson had shares that could be split into whole number amounts. But in reality, this may not always be the case. When the shares do not split evenly, we get fractional shares. In other words, there is less than one whole share. What do we do with that? Well, in this situation, the corporation will often pay out cash for this fraction, so they'll buy you out for your fraction. Let's look at an example of how we would calculate this. All right, what will I receive for my fractional share? Well, you will receive the same price for the fractional liquidation as you did for the whole number of shares that were executed. So, even though you didn't receive cash, you'll receive a price that's assigned to each share after the split. And this price that's assigned to each share will be assigned as well to your fractional share and you'll receive cash for that. So you'll no longer own that fraction of a share. For example, Steve owned 942 shares of Graham Corporation. On January 3, a 5 for 4 split was announced. The stock was selling at $56 per share before the split. We want to determine how Steve was financially affected by the split. In order to solve this, we need to set this up just lesson 1. This means we need to create our fractions and set up our proportional ratios. So once again, I've written out post-split shares over pre-split shares, as well as our post-split price over our pre-split price. And this is important because it helps us, again, to organize our thoughts. So let's look at our first ratio. We had a 5 to 4 split. Well, 5 is going to be how many shares we would get post-split, and 4 would be how many we would have pre-split. In other words, for every 4 shares, we are getting 5. Now, let's set this equal to what we know. Well, pre-split, Steve owned 942. So that goes down here. Post-split, we don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. And we need to know how many shares he's going to get to determine if we have any fractional shares. In order to solve this, remember, we just need to cross multiply. We end up with 4x equals 4,710. When we divide both sides by 4, we can determine how many shares he had post-split. And by my calculator here, 4710 divided by 4 gives us 1,177.5. So we do have a fractional share here. We have 0.5 of a share. That amount, we cannot give him a share. So for that amount, we will give him cash if we were the corporation. But we don't know how much cash to give, a, give him until we can determine our post-split price. So let's do the same thing, but with price. Now remember, when we're creating our ratio for price, because we are doing a stock split, his price is going to go down. So we can't forget that price goes down and stocks go up. There's an inverse relationship there. So, Whatever he had pre-split, the value per share, will go down post-split. So I always want to put the smaller number post-split and the bigger number pre-split. So pre-split, each stock share was worth $56. Now we want to determine what that's worth post-split. Once again, we'll go ahead and cross multiply. So x times 5 will equal 4 times 56. So we would get 5x is equal to 224. Solving for x, we divide both sides by 5. So we know then that x is equal to $44.80. So each share or fraction of a share is going to be worth $44.80. OK, we can determine a couple of things here. We can determine the value of his stock. as well as determine 
the value that he's going to receive for his fractional shares. So let's go ahead and look. He had 942 shares valued at $56 a share. I've put that in my calculator. The value, the total value of the stock that he owned pre-stock split was $52,752. We can check ourselves after the stock split to make sure that he still has that same value. So after the stock split, he was left with 1,177.5 shares at $44.80 per share. So if I multiply that, I should still get 52,752. And we do, 52,752. Notice that I've included the fractional share in my calculation because that is something that he still received. Now, what's going to happen? He is not going to receive all this cash unless he sells his stocks. But what he is going to receive is a little bit of cash for this 0.5. So in the end, he's cashing out a half of a share at $44.80 per share. So how do we do that? All we need to do is take his half share times the price per share to figure out how much cash he's going to get. So if we take 0.5 times $44.80, Steve will receive from this company $22.40 after that transaction. And so how much will he have left? Well, he will own now $1,000. 177 shares at $44.80. So we know that it should be 52,752 less 2240. If we plug it into our calculator, we can see that indeed it is 42,729.60, which is exactly $22.40 less. All right, that concludes our lesson on fractional shares. So at this point now, you should be able to understand what a fractional share is and how stockholders end up with fractional shares, as well as how to find the value of a fractional share after a stock split.